Okay, welcome to another video. Today we're going to check out Garuda Linux, which is an Arch-based distribution that focuses on performance and ease of use. Now they have quite a lot of different desktop environments to choose from. So we could have gone with KDE Plasma, GNOME, XFCE, Wayfire, which is one I have actually already tested out a few days ago and I might do a video on that one separately moving forward. I'll see how I go with that one. LXQT, Kwin, Dpin, and i3. Now every version has an Ultimate or a Light Edition apart from the Wayfire Edition which comes in just a Light Edition. Now they all use ButterFS as the default file system which allows for easy system snapshots via Timeshift and they use the Zen Kernel. So you've probably guessed by the title of today's video, we are going to be checking out the ultimate edition of LXQTK Win. So I've gone ahead and downloaded the ISO and I've already installed it. So the ISO was about 4.5 GB in size and the installer which was using Calamares was finished in around about 10 minutes and it also gave us the option to enable swap with Hibernate. So we're going to start off with just the desktop and the reason why this really intrigues me and I've wanting to check this one out more than any of the others so far is the inclusion of KWIN and just a lot of sort of packages and programs you're going to be more used to seeing on KDE. So it's going to be kind of a strange amalgamation of a lot of that combined into this to make kind of an interesting and unique take on LXQT. So what we're going to do is start with just the desktop. So the panel at the top is an LXQT panel. So if we go into configure panel, we can go into the widgets here and then we can see how they've set up the panel. Oh, I do believe we've also got a wobbly window. I think that's wobbly. Anyway, so we have the application menu here, which is just your standard menu that you'll get in LXQT. But you'll notice down at the bottom here, we have like a more flashy, transparent menu there as well to launch your applications. We then have our desktop switcher, which by default will give you just the two, but you obviously you can increase that or decrease that or just have none entirely. And it moves from a left to right motion. We then have a spacer. And then our clock. So I think if I was to use this long term, I would have to fiddle around with the spacing to get this clock a bit more center because that would just really sort of take my attention away from whatever I was doing and I'd just keep getting annoyed that the clock isn't quite centered. So I think for the duration of this video, we're just going to move that all the way to the end there like so. Okay, we then have our system tray, status notifier, plugin, removable media, keyboard state indicator, backlight, volume control, and then a quick launch. So we have our little sort of update manager there, which is going to be PAMAC. We have Redshift, which will allow us to change the color or temperature of the screen. We then have a clipboard and we also have KDE Connect there, which allow you to sort of connect your Android phone wirelessly and share things like notifications, etc. So that's basically the top panel. And also we have our sort of log, off, log in and log out buttons there, shut down, reboot, etc. And we will be testing out the hibernation towards the end. Okay, so now we have a conkey to the right, and let me just move my face so you can see it. Where are you? And I'm gone. Right, so it kind of just shows you system information like status of your CPU, RAM, swap, disk I.O., processes, CPU, etc. Right, moving on to this panel at the bottom. Now, I'm not too familiar with this panel, but I have found out that it's KDE Smooth Dock. So if we go into panel settings there, as you can see about K smooth dock. Again, this is something that you're more likely to see on the KDE desktop. As you can see, they're a cool desktop panel for KDE Plasma 5. So it's got a nice bit of icon zoom there. I'm not a massive fan of icon zoom, so I'd probably play around with the appearance settings and just get it to be static. And obviously it's transparent there. And we also have a clock here as well. So you could potentially just remove one of these clocks. In fact, I don't think you need two clocks, do you? So we could remove that if we was that bothered. And we also have quick links to our trash, minimize all, lock screen. And then we have a multitasking view here. So if we do that, that will then spread the windows like that for us to just jump into like that. So we then have our Garuda welcome screen. Now I haven't actually gone through this too much at all. So we're going to do this now. So the general tab just has the website links to the forum, to GitLab, the repository, Telegram and Twitter. So in tools, we have Garuda settings. Okay, here's where you can just change things like your kernel, keyboard settings, locale settings, etc. Let's get out of that. We have boot options, network assistant, partition manager, which is probably, yep, it's KDE partition manager. So that's just going to scan those disks. It's probably going to take a fair bit of time. I've got quite a lot of stuff going on, as you can see there to the left 
right we're not going to let that do anything too crazy okay we also have time shift which is where we are going to be doing our system snapshots as we're using butterfs as you can see there butterfs will be the default selection and then we could do our system snapshots on a monthly weekly daily hourly basis so let's just go finish okay we then also have our system cleaner so i don't know what the system cleaner is okay stacer much like we saw yesterday in the reborn os video which is where you can do things like clear your cache start up applications etc so let's quit that and we have i think that's the most of it so software will just open up yeah pamac manager there so let's get out of that and now if we go into maintenance we can quickly upgrade the system reinstall all packages refresh mirrors edit the repositories remove orphaned packages clear package cache and remove database lock so here is where you can do some quick settings for your ButterFS stuff. So you can do defragments, FS trim, scrub, and then you've got just some status there of overall stuff. And if you refresh that, we'll just give you a bit more up-to-date information. So here we have quick access. This looks quite interesting to me. I'm not sure this is something that I would ever use as you're nine times out of 10 going to have to be going into the welcome screen to actually enable a lot of this stuff. But it's kind of like on an Android phone when you pull down your notification center, you have those little quick toggles there for very quick settings, which that appears to be. As you can see, we have things like airplane mode, Wi-Fi, etc. I'm not too sold on how useful that is going to be on a desktop operating system, but it's interesting to have it there. And again, there, same for control. Now settings, we have guest support on here. So on the login screen, which we'll show in a moment, it has the guest enabled by default. So you can just log in with a guest and we could just take that away if we didn't really want that there. We then can enable high DPI, GDM Wayland and AdGuard. So that's pretty much the Garuda welcome screen. So what we're gonna do now is go through the applications, bearing in mind we are using the ultimate edition. So there's gonna be a whole lot of packages in this version that aren't going to be in the light edition and if you're someone that prefers not to have a very bloated system it would probably be worth avoiding a lot of the ultimate editions so we're going to start in fact let's use this menu at the bottom here so in development we won't go for everything because there's going to be far too much we have a lot of the uh, qt assistant designer linguist stuff icon browser gui what does that say GUI SRCPY. So I do believe this is a, I've used this, if this is what I'm thinking it is, you can use this to mirror your Android phone screen. If this is it, GUI Scrappy, I do believe that's what it is. Yeah, that appears to be what I think it is. So I've not actually seen a GUI for it before. You usually run it in a terminal and then you can summon it from there and then open a window to show your Android screen. I'm pretty sure that's what this is though. As you can see, it's got options there like things for record screen and rotate. Interesting, I've not actually seen a GUI for this before. Crazy. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay, let's put a link there on our desktop as well. Right, so that was development. So in education, we just have the one application, which is LibreOffice Math, which probably means we're going to have the full LibreOffice suite. Right, games. There's going to be a lot of selection here for games, and it does mention sort of gaming is a focus on their website. So as you can see, it's got a lot of packages. Um, it has things like Mindtest, Lutris. I do believe I even saw Discord somewhere at some point. Or maybe I was that was in the internet. Yeah, so let's have keep having a look at games anyway. So we have the sort of the standard stuff like Solitaire. We have Mario, Yuzi, Yuzu, Knights, Kamajong, Gamer World, Game Hub, G Overlay, DOSBox, okay. Retro Arch is even there as well as Scum VM. T Worlds. Now you might notice we have a few different applications for Steam. So LSI is Linux Steam integration. And then you have the standard Steam native packages and runtimes there. So we might have to quickly open one of those and just let it do an update in the background because I'm quite interested to see how this performs with an odd game here and there as well. So we'll let that just do that in the background while we carry on having a look through. So that's basically your games. And as I said, there's a lot there. You've got the PPSPP stuff with QT, PCR, XR, Moonlight, Mini Galaxy. So they have gone quite... They have definitely gone for the whole sort of gamer route there and have included a lot of packages that a lot of people that play games on Linux should appreciate. Right, let's keep moving. So that was games. So in graphics, we have Converse Scene, which is something I've never used before. Flameshot, G Overlay, LX Image, Lecter. 
liberal office draw photo flare screenshot and scan light let me just get rid of that a minute you would have just noticed as well the wallpaper has changed so it does that on a periodic basis we'll go into that in a moment as well so let's have a look at internet now so in internet we have the ssh and vnc server browsers blue devil for bluetooth stuff com man ui setup Discord is included out of the box again, which is pretty cool. So I use Discord. So if I was to use an Ultimate Edition, I would not be unhappy seeing that included there. Firefox is our default web browser. We already know that it's got KDE Connect. So it has KRDC, which is the sort of Linux equivalent to remote desktop, which I've been playing around with a little bit, actually. And I might do a video on it as well, because on my iPad, I've installed the um, RDP program. And I've also installed KRDC on one of my Linux distros. And it's got full touchscreen support and everything works really quite nicely and i'm quite impressed with how sort of low latency it's, it is but i might go into that in another video at some point anyway so we have nitro share remote viewer thunderbird is your default web uh, email client you also have stream link twitch gui extreme download manager and qbit torrent i don't mind qbit torrent actually Okay, I've noticed it's, it's opening things in a full screen view. Let's open up something else a minute. Okay, so as you can see, it's tiling things. Let's open another application. Right, I think I know what's going on here. So, as this is LXQTK Win, this can use KWIN scripts. Let's go into the KWIN settings a moment and just have a look at what's going on. So if we go into system settings, right, we're looking for Kwin of some description. So as you can see there, we even have Kvanta Manager that can help get some nice theming across the desktop. Session Manager, System Settings, Command UI Setup, Fan Control GUI, KD Connect, LXQT. There we go. Kwin settings. Right, so if we open this up, this is what's quite cool about coupling LXQT in Kwin in this kind of fashion so we have all the compositor built in and stuff and the windows decoration etc kwin scripts right cronkite is quite a cool little script that i actually use on my own personal machines i'll chuck a video up there that will show it on a kd desktop that i use so cronkite is a tiling script which if you go into the geometry you can also add little gaps you'll notice the way we're opening things at the moment I don't know what their default shortcuts are. We'll have a look at that in a moment as well. So it's going to tile things in a fashion like that. But we have no gaps in the middle and stuff. And I quite like a little gap here and there when I'm using tiling Windows managers. So what we can, in fact, do is just add a couple of numbers here and there. So we're going to just do four on everything. I'm also going to chuck a four there as well. We might have to log out before it takes effect. Right, so we're going to log out and then log back in and hopefully that will take effect with the gaps in between the windows and it will look a sort of a bit fancier. So let's get out of this a moment and log out and log back in. Okay, so we're back in. Let's test it out now. I'm quite impressed actually. I'd, I'd really like Cronkite. I've never actually used it on something that isn't KDE. There we go. So as you can see around the border there, you can see a gap and then around the sides and there'll also be one at the bottom. So if we open up another terminal and another one, and this is the um, the default layout that you can get with Cronkite, although you can change it. But as you can see, we've got some nice gaps all throughout that with those windows now in between where they sort of would just be side by side. Very nice. I'm liking this actually. Right, let's go back into the settings. I do want to see what else we can do then. So we have the LXQTK win settings there. NX Firewall, which I do believe comes straight from Nitrix, so that's where I first used it. So it's quite a simple, again, just a loud denier kind of layout there. So Kvanta Manager, let's open that up. So what is the active theme? So the active theme in Kvanta is Vimix Dark Doda. And now let's go into LX Appearance and see what the theming is like on there. So the widget style for QT has gone straight to Kvanta, which is cool. And then it's also got the GTK theming set to Vimix Dark Doda as well. Icon theme is Vimix Dark Doda. I don't know if I'm saying that right, to be honest with you. And then the LXQT theming is set to the system. Okay, they've done quite a good job here in just the way it looks, to be fair. I'm not too fussed about that. So what else can we do in here? So we can do software updates, Thunderbolt, hardware configuration, login screen, which is SDDM, core control, 
Samba server configuration. Okay, this is quite a unique LXQT setup, I must say, to be honest with you. Okay, so what we're going to do now is do a quick reboot and then get a fresh RAM reading at boot. Then we're going to try out the odd game here and there. I think I've got a hard drive with a few games installed, so we shouldn't have to wait around for Steam to download a load of stuff. And then we'll test Hibernate out, and then we're going to wrap it up there. But so far, it's definitely a unique way of doing LXQT from my experience anyway. Okay, so we've just started back up. Let's see what HTOP tells us. There we go, so it's a very, very large amount of memory that's being used out of the box. So if you're someone that's concerned about that, you're going to want to use one of the light editions because that is very large and high RAM usage, especially for LXQT. So the swap there is saying 46 GB, so I'm wondering if it's also picked up a bit of swap space from another distro that's installed on this computer because I'm pretty sure we went for 34.5. But now will be the perfect time to test out hibernation. So let's open a couple of things like PC Man FM. And let's also open up Qubit Torrent. And we're going to hopefully be able to hibernate. And then when we come back and resume from hibernation, that should all still be there on the screen. So let's jump into here. We'll use the GUI and we're going to press hibernate. Okay, do you really want to hibernate your computer? Hibernate the computer into a low power state. System state is preserved if the power is lost. Right, let's go for it. Right, it's doing the power call. Okay, so we've got an error. Inactive or interactive authentication required. Okay, so it's not pulling up the um there should be a little box then I guess. We'll try it in the terminal though. Uh system CTL hibernate. Uh let's chuck an eye there. Ugh. Right, so it's gone there. Hopefully the screen will go off and Hibernate will work and it will suspend to disk. So my screen has turned off. I'm going to pause the video and then when I come back, we should hopefully be resuming from Hibernation. Okay, my computer's gone completely off, so I'm going to press Enter. And hopefully we can resume from Hibernation. Okay, we're starting back up now. It didn't take too long for the computer to fully power down into that low power state, to be honest with you. So I've got high hopes that this has worked time will obviously tell right we're in the login screen or the lock screen let's get into it so Tyler okay it's not letting me type in my password huh. okay it just didn't give us any characters but as you can see Everything is still on the screen there, so the hibernation has worked. Apart from it wasn't working with the GUI there, it seems to have a problem calling the authentication, but it has worked when we've done it in the terminal. Okay, cool. Right, we're going to try one game or two and see if that all works as it should. So I'm going to pause the video here, log into Steam, and see if I've got a hard drive with a few games installed to save us some time. Okay, so it's been about an hour since we last started filming. Um, I had to change it up. My Steam library is either misplaced or I've overwritten it or something so we ended up just having to download CSGO very quickly as it is the smallest game in my library and I was getting from anywhere between 200 and 300 frames per second which is pretty much what I'd expect from any Linux distro so there wasn't really a massive dramatic increase in any performance not that I would have expected it to but I always like to check these things out before we sign off though we did miss a couple of sections here mainly I want to just talk about Octopi so Octopi is another way where you can manage your packages as well as the PAMAC manager here. So you, have, you can either manage your packages in here or of course you can use Octopi which again is just a GUI to manage applications, installations and removing and things like that. So you've got a couple of choices there and we did mention how the wallpapers change on a periodic basis. So if you go into desktop preferences in slideshow you'll notice by default it has an enabled slideshow so what that's going to do is anything inside this folder any images inside that folder will change every five minutes by default. Personally, I prefer a static image, but you can go as low as I believe one minute. And that means every one minute your wallpaper is going to change. That's probably a bit too much for me, but if that's something you enjoy, then the option is there. And let's quickly cycle through a few of these wallpapers. So they have a, so that's the one you're going to find in elementary. So they have a little selection there of different wallpapers and some of them are quite nice and some of them are a bit funky to say the least but anyway 
One final thing, so I've noticed the alt tab switcher is the full screen alt tab switcher. So if we open up a few things here, and then we do alt and tab, you'll notice that you have the full screen view there when you're switching applications. Again, it's not my choice. I kind of just like quite a simple alt tab switcher as opposed to these flashy animations. But it's there for those who like that kind of thing. So to wrap it up then, this has been quite a unique and interesting LXQT desktop to be fair. And one of the more intriguing setups of LXQT that I've used as of late. And I've actually quite enjoyed it. I'm not sure I would use this on any of my own personal computers. But it's definitely an interesting one there and a good option for those who do like LXQT but just want a bit more of a flashier animated setup. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.